Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we go over event effects and how you can put just certain effects on different events inside your session. Everyone knows when you're in the mixing stage of your session, you're able to put plugins onto different tracks, but maybe you want to be able to put a certain effect onto just one little section of that track. Well, there's a few ways to do it, but let's dive into the DAW and talk about how event effects can do it for us. So here we are inside the session, and you can see already that there's a couple little highlights right here. There's this event right here, and this event over here. I colored them pink so that they really stand out. This way we know what we're looking at. I'm very quickly gonna open up my mixer by hitting F3. And you can see it looks like I have a lot of processing going on. Now, that may be true, I have a lot of plugins on each of these tracks, but what they're doing actually isn't that much. But that's not what we're talking about right now. What we're talking about is event effects. So everyone knows you're able to go into any track, hit the plus button, and add in any kind of plugin insert you want on your track itself. But what if you wanted to do just a little bit of effect on a certain section? I'm gonna close my mixer, and let's take a look at this piece right here. When I was doing this mix, the artist in the demo had a little filtered telephone kind of sound on their voice, and they wanted to recreate that in this full mix that we did. Now, the way to do that is actually very easy. Let's say we wanna do a similar effect right here. I'm gonna select my range, and I'm gonna cut it out real quick. I did. Option X on a Mac or Alt X on a PC. So now we have a new little event right here. I'm gonna open up my browser by hitting F5 and I'm in my effects. And let's say we wanna recreate another telephone style effect. I'm gonna go ahead and use the stock EQ. And what I can do is if I try and just click and drag right now, you can see it's going to add the Pro EQ to the whole channel. And that's not what we're looking for. What we wanna do is actually put it on just this event right here. In order to do that, I'm gonna go on my keyboard and on a Mac it's gonna be Option and on a PC it will be Alt. When I hold that, you can now see that the blue highlight went away and I'm now highlighting in yellow just this one event. And you can see actually the little dialogue changed as well. It says Add Event Effects Pro EQ. If I go left or right, it then selects the different events that I have going on. So this was our guy in question. Let's go ahead and release the mouse. And now we have an event effect right on this event right here. And this little symbol shows that we have event effects going on. Like I said earlier, the artist wanted a kind of a telephone effect. So let's see if we can find a preset that give us just that. Boom, telephone, here we go. I hit L to locate there. I'm gonna hit S to solo, and let's take a listen to this telephone effect that is now just on this event. The cold is vicious sometimes, but the truth can be too. I let it roll there a little longer so you could see that it was just an event effect. All we did was make that telephone effect on what we had selected, and when it got to the next section, the telephone effect was gone and it just had the regular channel processing that was going on. You're not limited to one effect either. If I wanted to follow this up with some compression as well, I could drag another compressor right on top of it, pull up in some settings. Let's just take a very quick preset. And now let's take another listen. The cold is vicious sometimes. So we had a little compression going on as well. It's after a telephone EQ and you kind of can't hear it as much, but if you ever needed to reference what event effects you had going on, in your inspector window down here on bottom, there's a drop down right here where it says event effects. If I click this arrow, now let's zoom this up so you can see it. You can see here's my event effects and the order that they're in. I could even change the order that they're in if I wanted to alter how the event effects were happening. Now let's say this is the perfect event effect, and it's exactly the sound that I was going for in this mix. If I wanted to save some extra CPU powder, I could come right here. It says render, and if I hit this, it processes the audio and replaces that event with those effects already embedded into it. Now when we play back. The cold is vicious sometimes. 
It's the sound we had before we rendered our effects. Now it's just a new event right in the session. But there was a little change. Take a look at this. You have the ability to restore back to its previous state. So if we hit this, it undoes everything and puts the event effects right in here. Maybe the compressor wasn't good for this sound. You can turn it off and re-render that quickly. One thing to keep in mind is if you're using event effects, the channel in question is still going to be processed through your mixer. So everything that we just did on this event right here is still going to go through this channel's processing. Now this may or may not be something that you want inside of your session, but it's just something to keep in mind. Another way of adding just a specific sound to a specific event is literally just taking a copy of that section that you want and putting it onto a new track and then putting those plugins onto that new track. Then you can process that new little section of audio however you want without using event effects and it can have its own different signal path afterwards. That's all for now. If you found anything in this video informative, please like and share the video. For more, visit timflansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in a comment and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.